hello welcome back to my channel this week's video is a q a because i'm celebrating the fact that 700 people are following along so i sent out a little community post asking for questions and you guys showed up so i'm just gonna go through them all i've never done this before so uh buckle up and come along for the ride i come to you from my office my office is in my apartment, just a one bedroom that my husband and I share, but we've definitely made it work for us. So I've got all my made pieces over there. I make my pottery over there and I have a couple shelves outside in the hallway where I put stuff that's like drying and things like that. Normally, I so that's a quick little rundown. My first question is describe your dream pottery studio. <laughs> Well, my dream pottery studio, I think, would definitely be like a little backyard shed vibe. One day, if we ever have a home, I would love to be able to have my commute just be strolling down a cute little path in my backyard to get to my studio. That would, one, have lots of windows. Lawn maintenance. Okay lawn maintenance is over it got so loud there for a second so as i was saying like i don't want anything massive but i would love it to where there could be like a section for my kiln to not be in the same exact room as where i'm making so that i could like make stuff while the kiln is on and it not be like super hot the next question is do you have other forms pieces designs that you're wanting to make and what has been challenging as a creative so the first part yes there are definitely other things that i want to toy around with one goal this year i have is to make a side table my kiln is like pretty massive so i know it could handle making something that's like 20 25 inches tall which is really cool things that would involve me throwing with a lot of clay one and then possibly attaching two things to make it even bigger uh, I love the challenge that that would bring and as far as what has been challenging to me as a creative I think just generally speaking being a creative in 2023 is hard because you can't just do that you have to do so many other things if you want to like live off of your art and that is really hard for me because there are most days where I just like want to sit at my wheel and play and most times I do like I'm not always recording myself because I came to pottery as a way of like <laughs> relaxing and it's still very much that for me especially throwing to having to be always thinking of like how you're going to market yourself while you're creating something that's supposed to come from like a yeah a pure place in your heart it's like yeah you just have to think of so many other variables these days and that is very hard for me we can't just be artists we gotta be a lot of other things too when did you start making pottery and when did you start your business you are very inspiring thank you for that little last part <laughs> that's really sweet i started making pottery in 2021 I took a class at my local pottery studio. It was a beginner's wheel throwing class and it was <laughs> so hard. Um, I could not figure out how to center pretty much the entire eight week course. I definitely made pieces, but they were like the most wobbly little buddies ever. I actually have some. This is one of my first pieces, which is so funny to think about. I remember I mean, he's still very cute. I think one day in one of the classes, <laughs> I had like made a piece and my teacher made a comment and was like, I feel like you have this like childlike flair that a lot of people who have been like making pottery for like years and years and years are trying to get back to and you're just like doing it right off the bat. And I was like, I kind of take that as like a major compliment and the name It's Wonky came up because I that's like the only word I could think of when I was throwing all of these things that are like off kilter but still like fun and now that I've like 
gotten better at throwing it's been fun to see how the like wonkiness has like changed and i love that I finished that eight week course in the summer of 2021 and i got my wheel during the summer i got my kiln during the summer and i had just quit my full-time job went on a big trip with my husband and we came back and that's really when i just started doing everything so i quit my job to be a freelance photographer i was shooting at like a actual studio and i did that for like years and years and years and just wanted to do my own thing now and so i started my photo business and then the ceramics kind of just like got tacked on maybe in 2022 i like officially made it a thing so it definitely wasn't my plan from the start to like grow it into what it is now but i'm so glad it is becoming something because it's been so life-giving and just fun and challenging and i have learned so much just so many like plus sides even though like some days are miserable and i'm frustrated and i just like don't know what to do or why i'm doing any of it i know i am where i want and need to be and so i started selling at the end of 2021 because i had found my kiln on facebook marketplace in like may of that year and i just like got home from my trip in july and made so much stuff trying to figure out the kiln and like the proper like hold and temperatures and all of that and how glazes looked and trying different clays and like trying to land on like where i am now as far as what clay body i use and what are like my staple glazes and like what kind of colors i feel really drawn to um so i sold in November and December of 2021, just like all of the little pieces that I had made and did not need. And it went over really well. And so I think that kind of launched me into doing more in 2022. Like the first day of that year, I got a wholesale order, which was crazy because I was still figuring out how to like repetitive throwing. And yeah, it was like a 25 mug order. So yeah, that honestly was like, like technically I shouldn't have said yes to that, but I'm like so glad I did because it went over a lot better than I thought it would. And I, that taught me so much to like push me into making for the rest of the year and to get me to where I am now. And yeah, just trying to make it like fully financially stable. It's all a journey, <laughs> but that's how mine began. <laughs> The next question, do you plan on making ceramics full time? How does your husband and family feel about your ceramics journey? It's a great question. The first one, yes, that is the goal. I technically do spend, I guess, like a full time amount of time working on ceramics, but it's not full time like uh, financially stable. So I couldn't like live off my ceramics right now, but that's what I'm working towards. And thankfully my husband is super supportive of where I'm at right now and was supportive of like me even getting to this point, like quitting my job, figuring out what I want and need to like make my business a thing. And my family has been the same. My parents have never tried to steer me away from that. They're very much like supportive and caring throughout my whole upbringing, which I think has definitely allowed me to feel very confident now in being able to entertain this thought, being able to devote my time and energy to this thing that I really believe in and believe could be something fun for me, fun for other people, and you know, spend my time <laughs> making pieces that can last generations is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm grateful for the support from all of my family, my friends, like everybody. It's been really, really wonderful to, um, yeah, dive into this thing with a group of people behind me. Can you share your favorite pottery YouTube channels? That's a good one. Ones that I watch from Tree to Sea, great. I believe her name's Carmen. It's Studio Melon, M-E-L. I will put it up here. I just don't know if I'm saying it right. If I want to like learn something, obviously Florian Gatsby is like 
probably one of the most well-known <laughs> potters on YouTube. Pottery to the People is also fun and informative. <laughs> Those are the few I can think of off the top of my head. If I can think of any more, I'll put them in the comments. Let's see. What temp do you best do and what cone do you fire to? What are some of your favorite pieces around the house that you've made and kept and used? I fire my bisque to cone 04 and then I fire my glaze pieces to cone 5 and I hold it for about like 30 minutes to hit cone six. I just come to realize that if I do it that way versus like actually firing it to cone six in my kiln, it hits a more proper six and less like some of the shelves over firing and some of them hitting six just right. This way it seems to get everybody right where they need to be. Some of my favorite pieces around the house. Gosh, so many. <laughs> Well, in my kitchen, I have a few bowls that I made last year that I love and I use all the time. Um, they're just simple, but I don't know why. The shape is just like perfect for so many things, mainly breakfast. I have like a shelf in our mug cabinet that's just stuff that I've made and it's kind of cute to see the evolution of my work because I had stuff in, or I have stuff in there that I made in my class. I had stuff in there that I made like right when I got my kiln. So that's cool. I use those mugs all of the time. I made this like frame thing, kind of. I don't know. I just wrote a little, or stole a little quote from one of my notebooks that I had written out one day because I liked it and it made me happy. Oh, my test wonk pad. I use it literally every day. It is the perfect size for my small desk and I love writing with a little dry erase marker. It's just so fun <laughs> and satisfying to just like work through my day and just erase it all and by the end of it it's empty. Love that. Feels like a game and sometimes that's the motivation you need. <laughs> Next and maybe last question. Yeah. Are there any clay forms that you find challenging now that you want to master someday? And what are some of your favorite non-pottery ways to relax? And also curious about the writing that you do. That's fun. <laughs> um, as far as clay forms that are challenging for me now that I would love to master, one of them would be bud vases, like making a small neck on a vase, and I would love to be able to make larger pieces that have a small neck, and really just be able to throw with more clay. I really want to master that because I would love to make big vases and really like doodle and have fun um, glaze designs on them to where they're so functional but more of like a statement piece for your home. Some of my favorite non-pottery ways to relax, one would be going to my local community garden because it's so lovely there, so quiet. Everybody who has plots there are pro gardeners and it's always thriving. I instantly feel at peace there. <laughs> nature has a hold on me, so nature, big fan. I love reading. I've been listening to more audiobooks lately. That wasn't my thing for a while, but now it's definitely my thing. I just never used to be a reader growing up. I like did it, but I would just rather get my hands messy or like make something. So it's hard for me to like sit still and just read a book. But now it's definitely one of my favorite ways to just relax and chill. Also just stretching. I love stretching so much, which if you're watching this and you're a potter, like don't forget to stretch. I think it makes your life longer. I don't know if that, <laughs> that's true, <laughs> but I feel like it could be because it's such an underrated like activity, but it's such a game changer. I love doodling. I got a sketchbook a couple weeks ago and I made some progress in it. Sketchbook tour. Yeah, I just like doing things that I see. Nothing crazy. I'm not a drawer, but it's been fun. 
far as my writing goes, I feel like I want to get better at like disciplining myself in it because I do think it is a not natural for me, but I'm naturally drawn to it. I definitely think I'm like closer to whatever part of myself that would allow me to like make metaphors and things and write. Basically, I started writing as a little tot of a human and would have little composition notebooks dedicated to my poems that I would write every day that were like five lines and like... <laughs> Oh, so silly. That has just always been a part of me and I think as I've gotten older and more in touch with like my emotions in a better way, I've been able to utilize that as a form of expressing myself, a form of understanding my life, like what I'm going through, and a form of connecting what I'm going through with like the bigger picture that is the world and connecting with other people because we all have feelings. <laughs> Years ago, I would just have these moments where like, I don't know, I would see a picture, take a picture, have a moment and like need to get it out. I was just like so close to my emotional self, um, which sometimes was like crippling, but sometimes was beautiful when I was able to like make all of these connections and um, put it on paper in a way that not only resonated with me, but resonated with like other people which I like didn't expect so I took most of that and I like self-published my first book and people bought it which is amazing I still have friends who I'll go to their house and I'll see it on their like coffee table or something like that which is really sweet and it is still to this day very special to me I've written like a notebook that <laughs> There's room for you to write, but also um, little prompts and things from my personal notebook that I've just written. I wrote another book two years ago about my trip to Iceland. I've been there three times, and if you haven't gone, I know it's probably like hyped up, but it's like actually worth the hype. <laughs> um, especially if you just like <laughs> rent a car and drive, and literally that's all you need to do. You will find so many things after I just quit my job, just made my photo business, and just bought my wheel before we left. So it was like a big moment once again, and I wrote this book from all the things that I had written in my notebook mm. on the trip. And it's called I Looked and Kept Looking, which is what I did the entire time we were there. And it's basically just like little blurbs and bits from my trip. I guess I'll read one. I hear the wind howl on the northern coast as the mountains stand still and I am left with no choice but to shiver in the presence of it all. So that's my writing. I hope that paints a little baby picture of who I am and why I like to write. It just feels like something I gotta do. And it's kinda nice to have that feeling. I lied, there's one more. It says, I know absolutely nothing about pottery, but your vlogs are so enjoyable and soothing. They make me wanna try out at least something clay adjacent just for fun. Do you have a favorite part of the process? Um, one, love that you're here and you know nothing about pottery. That's so cool and I'm so glad <laughs> you find this enjoyable. And yeah, clay adjacent, get to it. It really is so much fun. When I hear that question, I immediately think what part of the process involves cleaning because I absolutely hate cleaning up. It would be throwing, but I hate cleaning up after I throw. But if in a magical world I could throw and not clean up, I would be throwing all day long. Truly, all day long. Second to that, I would say trimming, but also unloading the kiln after a glaze firing. That would be up there too. So I guess I would say my favorite part is throwing or trimming or unloading the kiln after a glazed fire. That's not a proper answer to your question, but 
I'm very indecisive and I love all of those three a whole lot. I keep lying to you. There's another question. What got you interested in pottery and do you remember the, what the first piece that you made was? Uh, what got me interested? The short of it is my brother-in-law was like, do you want to take a pottery class when I move back home because we should do something fun? And I said, yeah, that sounds really fun. And then I got on the wheel and I lost my mind. I loved it so much. And here we are. <laughs> and I think it just like everything aligned. I just needed it at that moment as a form of therapy because I had just like quit my job and was going through a lot. One of my first pieces, I did pull it. I showed another one in <laughs> um, another clip, but here's another buddy that's pretty similar. similar. And I just remember throwing this to be like, this is gonna be a huge cup, and I'm like so stoked. Like, probably thought it was gonna be like 12 ounces, but <laughs> here we are, probably half that. And I still love it though. And it's really cool to see a little side by side. And I've actually loved doing this Q&A just as a form of reflection on the progress I've made in so many different ways. And it's just really beautiful. So thank you for asking. Well, that's me. That's my pottery journey. I am so happy to be doing this. And I feel like I am making strides as far as making it more um, stable for me. I'm grateful for support and everything from my family and friends and for all of you who have supported me either financially as buying something or even just watching these videos that helps too or following me on Instagram also helps and I'm just feeling really grateful to be here and grateful to be doing what I want to do. See you next week.